The classification of Kimberella is important for scientific understanding of the Cambrian explosion. If it was a mollusk or at least a protostome, the protostome and deuterostome lineages must have diverged significantly before 555 million years ago. Even if it was a bilaterian but not a mollusk, its age would indicate that animals were diversifying well before the start of the Cambrian. The long dorsal spines of the Wuaxia may have been a defense against predators. It apparently moved by contractions of a slug-like foot on its underside. The feeding apparatus may have acted as a rasp to scrape bacteria off the top of the microbial mat that covered the sea floor. Hawkeria looked like slugs in chain mail with shell plates at the extremities of the body. Since it was unsuited to swimming and had no obvious adaptations for burrowing, it must have lived on the sea floor, walking by making its muscular sole ripple. Orthericlus may have formed a link between the Hawkeria and the Wewoxid families, characterized by a similar type of body armor. These organisms might have been stem group mollusks. Bivalves as a group have no head and they lack some usual molluscan organs like the radula and the odontophore. The majority are filter feeders. The gills have evolved into tenidia, specialized organs for feeding and breathing. Most bivalves bury themselves in sediment where they are relatively safe from predation. The shell is composed of calcium carbonate, and consists of two, usually similar, parts called valves. They appear in the fossil record first in the early Cambrian more than 500 million years ago and the total number of living species is about 9,200. The range of the Trigonia spans from Permian to Paleocene. The classification of rudists as true reef builders is controversial because they would catch and trap lots of sediment between their lower conical valves. Thus, rudists were not completely composed of biogenic carbonates as a coral would be. However, rudists were one of the most important constituents of reefs during the Cretaceous period. During the Cretaceous, rudist reefs were so successful that they drove scleractinian corals out of many tropical environments including shelves that are today the Caribbean and the Mediterranean. During this period tropical waters were between 6 degrees Celsius and 14 degrees Celsius warmer than today and also more highly saline. Giant clams is one of the most endangered clam species, their populations are diminishing quickly, and the giant clam has become extinct in many areas where it was once common. They can weigh more than 200 kilograms, measure as much as 120 centimeters across and have an average lifespan in the wild of over 100 years. Geoducts are one of the longest living organisms in the animal kingdom. The oldest recorded specimen was 168 years old. It sucks water containing plankton down through its long siphon, filters this for food and ejects its refuse out through a separate hole in the siphon. To escape predators such as crabs and shrimp. The flame scallops valves are utilized in fast locomotion, clapping their valves together to propel themselves away. Gastropoda are a major part of the phylum mollusca and are the most highly diversified class in the phylum, with 80,000 living snail and slug species. The first ones were exclusively marine. The scaly foot gastropod's esophageal gland houses symbiotic gamma proteobacteria from which the snail appears to obtain its nourishment. 
It is considered to be one of the most peculiar deep-sea hydrothermal vent gastropods, and it is the only known extant animal that incorporates iron sulfide into its skeleton. Violet sea snails are living at the very surface of the water. They have free-swimming larvae, but the adults do not swim and cannot create their rafts except at the surface where air bubbles are available. The name Xenophora means bearing foreigners, so-called because in most species the snail cements pieces of rock or shells to its own shell at regular intervals as the shell grows. Geography cone is a piscivore that dwells in sediment of shallow reefs, preying on small fish. It releases a venomous cocktail into the water in order to stun its prey. It fires a harpoon-like, venom-tipped modified tooth into its prey. The harpoon is attached to the body by a proboscis, and the prey is pulled inside for ingestion. Cowling ornata is nocturnal and prefers sandy or silty substrate. It has been shown to feed on brittle stars, a completely unique diet for a nudibranch. The feeding process of Cleanlamacina is somewhat extraordinary. The buccal apparatus consists of three pairs of buccal cones. These tentacles grab the shell of Ramacina. When the shell of the prey is opening facing the radula of Clean, it then grasps the prey with its chitinous hooks, averted from hook sacs. Then it extracts the body completely out of its shell and swallows it whole. <laughs> 